untamable, elusive, and known for their secretive nature. This solitary species native to the UK is now Britain's rarest carnival, the European wildcat. With some estimates stating there could be as few as 35 left in Scotland, the native wildcat to Great Britain is now our rarest carnivore. Many scientists and conservation groups have been working hard to ensure the wildcat's genetic diversity is not lost forever, as hybridisation with domestic cats has highly contributed to the species' rarity. One way to combat this and to help the species is by having carefully looked after breeding programmes. Here, the Derek Gow Consultancy is part of a breeding programme that is hopeful to reintroduce the wildcat back into England and Wales one day. We met with Peter Cooper, a conservationist at the consultancy who has helped develop a strategy on how this could be done. And we wanted to find out more about breeding and caring for the UK's rarest carnivore. So what is a Scottish wildcat? So I'll catch out on the first bit there. So the word Scottish wildcat is actually a bit of a misdemeanor because this is an animal you once found all over the UK. And really it's only in Scotland now because that's the one place that's left with some super habitat they could hang on to while we wipe them out from the rest of the country. The wildcat was basically seen along with a lot of other carnivorous mammals in this country as a pest, particularly with the wildcat to rabbits. Rabbit warrens were really valuable in medieval times. Then as time went on, basically to your chickens, anything you're keeping in stock, the wildcat was seen as enemy number one. So huge numbers of wildcats were wiped out from across England to the point they were pretty much extinct in England until the 1800s. And then by that time, you also had game shooting estates starting up, people rearing plenty of grouse, plenty of pheasants. And of course, again, wildcats were then destroyed along with a lot of other predatory mammals. So what you then saw was what was left of the wildcats that had been annihilated were hanging on to Western Scotland. That's where the last wildcats were left. And in fact, they probably would have gone extinct too were it not for the First World War which ironically then meant the gamekeepers went to the front lines but didn't come back. So the wildcats then began to come back into Scotland, but what's the problem then? There's far too few of them because we destroyed so many in the past that all they had to breed with were domestic cats. They had such a weak population. So over the last hundred years, what you're seeing with the wildcats left in Scotland is wildcats becoming more and more tabby cat, your home cat basically, to the point there's virtually none left. And that's why they have now been declared as functionally extinct in the UK, sadly. Now, we are one of quite a lot of zoos and private collections around the UK which are breeding wildcats as one big coordinated plan. And the aim is, yeah, to breed enough wildcats to go out into Scotland, but also we hope into England and Wales eventually as well, which is where the wildcat once roamed up until about 200, 300 years ago. And why is their conservation so important? So the wildcat is our last remaining cat species left after we uh, made the lynx extinct about a thousand years ago. Wildcats as a predator are part of this amazing network of animals which actually regulate their prey by controlling numbers, but not just the numbers of their prey, but also how the prey behaves. It encourages prey to move on to different areas, for example, which in the case of wildcats, you're looking at things like rabbits and mice and voles as the main prey base. But that in itself has amazing effects on the rest of the ecosystem. Now, we know from larger predators like wolves that they will change the behavior of deer and and that will make, means the habitat can prosper by reducing that grazing pressure. Now we're not sure if a similar thing happens to wildcats, but I suspect that it does. It's something we can't necessarily see ourselves, but there's so much you have to know about ecosystems that it's probably there under the radar and it's almost certainly gonna be happening there with wildcat. And an ecosystem isn't really a fully functioning ecosystem until you've got every cog and component back in place. And bear in mind in the UK that we have completely sterilized our countryside for years and years and years. Putting back as much as we can is so important. So putting the wildcat back in there as part of that very important predator guild is so important. And of course, the wildcat is very symbolic of our wilder nature. And I think if you can bring back something like that and show it to people who don't otherwise realize just what a spectacular natural history we do have in Britain, then that can only do good for encouraging people to conserve the magic that really is the natural world. How many times a day do you feed them? And what do you feed them? <laughs> So the wildcats will get fed about once or twice a day and they get a really nice mix of food here. So they'll get uh, quail and rabbit and also some chicks as well. 
and they'll also get a scattering of uh, bits of beef uh, throughout the week. And that way they get a full spectrum of uh, nutrition. For example, the one day they can have a nice big meal to tuck into, other days they're looking for smaller stuff scattered around the enclosure. So they're getting plenty of enrichment out of it. And the enclosures we have here are also designed in such a way that they're big enough for things like mice evolves to get through the gaps. And I'm sure they're catching live prey as well. And that's really important because once a wild cat makes that first live kill, it's a hunter from then on. These guys really do hold on to their predatory instincts quite quickly. So how many wild cats have you bred here? So we really started breeding program in earnest last year and we had our first litter of uh, four kittens then. Pleased to say we've had another litter of four kittens this year and we've also had another litter of two this year so far as well. So it's all going really well, which is really, really important for the species. And the kittens themselves are really lovely as well to look at. And realistically, can you see them making a comeback across Great Britain one day? I certainly do think so, yeah. So there are now efforts underway to cat to breed wild cats to be introduced into Scotland. So they have just got the money to set up and build a big cat to breeding facility up there. And hopefully over the next couple of years, we will see wild cats being released up into Scotland, which would be really nice to see. And then what we're hoping to do is work our way towards actually seeing wild cats released back into England and Wales where they once roamed about 200 years ago. Now, this is something that we'll only be able to do once we're sure of places where the habitat is good, uh, where the number of feral cats is either zero or low enough that it won't create much of an impact, and that communities are inside as well. Whenever you release an animal that's a carnivore that can potentially have an impact, even if it is relatively small in someone's lives, it's really important you get everyone on your side first before you go out and release these animals because cooperation is so important in conservation. But if we can meet all these criteria, then I think England and Wales really host a great place to release wildcats. If you look at Europe, where there are still wildcats today, you'll find they're living in landscapes that are very much like southern England. The woods, small fields, quite a mild climate. I think the habitat opportunity in England and Wales is really good. So long as we can identify good areas where they can go back, and we can get people inside, then I think, yeah, Wildcat has a good possibility of thriving for England and Wales and Scotland once again. It would be fantastic to see the Wildcat roaming across the entire of its natural range once more. And despite the ongoing challenges that the species faces, with careful conservation coupled with breeding and reintroduction programs, maybe one day the Wildcat will be a familiar face of the British countryside once more. Thank you.